Moon 5. Inspire. Imagine. Create. started wood turning as a way of relaxation in the evening and it was very much for just a hobby and enjoyment but I just fell in love with the wood turning. Around 2005 we went serious about the, the business side of it and we started to teach. If you sit in front of a computer all day long, no matter how interesting it is to you or some other technical boff, you really don't feel very satisfied after because you've nothing to show for it. And craft for me was a way, as Breed said, of getting rid of the day in a way and just as a way of expressing yourself. So that's how, that's how it started for us. I didn't expect to fall in love with it. So to me it was just another technical thing and then we fell in love with it and it became a passion and it's not just, uh, it's not just a thing we do, it's our whole lives. Our holidays, everything is based around craft in just a natural, in just a natural way. What happens in craft when you start off is that you know all your customers because you have so few and you meet them face to face. But if you want to progress in craft, you have to get the design of your products to such an extent that they sell themselves without you. A typical day um, usually starts off early afternoon. Um, and we both start turning. The morning is spent usually on the computer. There's maybe an order to fulfill, or you're doing some research for some project that you're doing, or you're researching a finish, or something like that. That's usually takes us up in the morning. And the afternoon, then we usually go turning. Often, when you're making something, you, you think about who's going to end up owning this piece, and you might spot some little figure in the wood, and you're thinking, will, will they see that little figure in the wood like I see it? We started teaching in our own workshop in 2005 and that wasn't a big leap because as I said I'd worked in the university, I was used to dealing with classes, I was used to presenting a technical subject to non-technical people. To be a teacher you really need to understand the craft and be able to break it down and teach somebody else. And the best teachers, and we'd be talking for ourselves here, are the ones who've really had to work at the craft, really had to think about it, really had to perfect it. So we have a deep belief, A, we're passionate about what we do, but we have a deep belief that everybody is creative. If you look at uh, 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 some young children and you give them crayons and a piece of cardboard, you don't have to give them a class in creativity. They will naturally just do it. We've had fantastic support from, from the Galway Leo um, Breed has been really dynamic and she understa understands the craft business, she understands the supports that we need and she has no hesitation in providing those supports. We have had a lot of mentoring with the, the Leo and we've also undertaken the Design and Crafts Council um, Building Craft and Enterprise course. We had been working away ourselves, we had been doing most things but the course and the mentors that we met on the course just reinforced the right way to do things. I'm really fortunate to have found something that we both can share. Yeah, we sh can share and we share in different ways, you know. As I said, in comp yeah, complimentary. As I said, Ambrose uses the wood as a canvas and he likes to burn, he likes to colour. Now, I do a little bit of colouring, but for me, I love to get a piece of wood that's highly figured and try to bring out the, the grain or the figure of that wood as best I can. And I love when you cut into the wood and you get a different view of the grain. You know, it's, it's so different than just when you start off with a little block of wood. I like to make small pieces that I can make fairly quickly and I still, I'm still doing my wood turning, which I, I love to do.
you have much less room for error on a small piece. You have to be much more precise on a small piece. There's as much, in, if not more skill, in pulling off a small piece well than there is on a, on a big piece of timber. It's, it's a cliche, find something you love and you'll never work again, but it really is our whole lives. Our customers are people who are looking for something that's handmade to a very, very high standard. This year, due to COVID, the landscape has changed for craft makers. Um, in March, all our wholesale orders were literally packed in boxes here because they couldn't be shipped and that wasn't the shop's fault. They, they all had to close. Especially with the Design Craft Council campaign made local and support local and the local enterprise look for local um, campaigns, people started to go online and really look for authentic Irish handmade stuff. When you put up a piece of wood and you start to cut away at the wood and you see shavings coming off, there's nothing more hypnotic than that. It just completely takes you over. We have a joke when we say, oh, if you don't stop, you're going to end up making a pencil because it's just so relaxing. It's your hands that are doing the turning and particularly with the right hand person, it's the right hand that's making all the, the shapes. You know, maybe you're doing housework, whatever it is, and you just want to get away from that. It's just a brilliant release to have something that's so completely different. Don't just look at an object take it, turn it on its side, turn it upside down, you know, look at what they call the negative space, which is really just a gap. So if you're looking at railings, sometimes people just look at the railing, but look at the shape in between the railings. And, you know, it's amazing how you just start to see shapes everywhere, even where you think there are no shapes, <laughs> there are. We turn differently and we, we turn different things. Um, and we're, we're almost complete opposites in the turning world. Ambrose loves to burn wood and colour it and I'm very much, I suppose, more um, conservative in the use of the wood. I can't bear to see any piece of wood be burnt. I save all of the little bits, you know, because I only need small bits and I'm a, a, a wood hoarder. Maybe that's probably the only thing that might have, um, might ever cause any little bit of friction is that Sometimes I get told I have too much wood and I'm just, you know, when am I going to use it, but... It's the aesthetic. Now, obviously both of us have an aesthetic sense, because what we do. But Regis' eye is so amazing, and I really mean amazing. When you enter flow, literally time stands still. Now, it would be wrong to say that we go around in a state of flow all day, every day, but at some stage of the day, we in that state and it's just it's just wonderful every one of us is capable of doing craft it's not about doing it well or badly it's about you just expressing yourself and when we teach we say that to people that you go to whatever level you think is is appropriate for you and the nice thing about craft is that there is no upper limit to that level. You can keep on pushing for the rest of your life. This video was brought to you by Creative Ireland, Local Enterprise Office Galway, the IDA West Region, and Galway County Council. Moon 5. Inspire. Imagine. Create.